The example we're going to focus in on um, is we've got a velocity equation of a particle um, and it's mapped by the equation 3t squared minus 14t plus 10 and we're going to find the initial acceleration of the particle and at what time um, was the acceleration of that particle equal to 1. So I'm just going to bring up my calculator and I'm going to enter my equation into y1. So three now um, in our um, situation our variable is time um, but we can just interchange that with our x variable that we graph with so 3x squared minus 14x plus 10 okay so i'm going to now quit out of my function editor so second and mode to quit um, and in here i'm again going to find my acceleration um, my initial acceleration of my particle. So for those of you studying calculus at the moment, you'll know that your acceleration is your derivative of your velocity, um, but if not, that's the connection there. So I'm going to find the derivative of that velocity equation at my point, my initial time, so when time is equal to zero. So to do that, I'm going to use alpha and then my quick keys to get up my derivative template. So that's you can see that's number three, that end deriv. Um, and in here, my variable is x. Now, I could write out my whole equation into the brackets here, but I know I already stored that under y1. So I can just use my quick keys again and use alpha f4 to bring up my y1 equation. Um, and again, I'm solving for where that x is equal to 0 because I'm looking at my initial condition. Enter, and I can see there my acceleration is equal to negative 14. Um, now, another way I could do this if I wanted to is look at it um, in a more kind of graphical scenario. So I'm going to sketch the graph of that function that I had before. Um, there we go. Here it is here. That's looking that's looking pretty nice. I don't think I really have to do too much with that. But um, if yours, I'll just show you what my window settings are. So I've got them set from um, negative 2 to 20 and then from negative 20 uh, to 50. I'm just going to change my x scale actually because that's... Um, it's not looking great, so I'm just going to change that to 1. Um, and there we go, lovely. We can see that graph looking really nicely there. Um, so to find my derivative at a point on the graph, I'm going to use my calc menu. So second and trace to bring that up. And then number 6 there says dy on dx. So that's going to tell me my derivative. Um, now it comes up, it says x equals to 9. I'm not finding 9. Again, I'm finding where x is equal to 0. So if I just type in 0... That will change that and I can press enter and there we can see um, your derivative is going to be the first thing that comes up there. So that's at negative 14, not to be confused with your coordinate y equals 10. Um, so derivative negative 14 at x equals 0 and my y coordinate there is 10. Okay, so that's the solution to that. The next thing I was going to show you really quickly is maybe we want to graph that whole acceleration function. Um, and we can do that back in our function editor again, so into y equals. Um, and again, I'm going to use that same derivative template we used before. So alpha, f2, and then the number 3 to bring up that derivative template. Um, again, my variable's x. I'm fine, I'm drawing, the sketching the draft of my initial function. So again, I'm going to use that quick keys to bring in my y1 variable there. Um, so I'm sketching the derivative with respect to x of my y1. Now in this case, I'm not finding x at a particular point. I want to find the derivative at all of those points. So I'm going to let my x equal to x there. Um, so now when I sketch my graph, lovely, I can see um, that's my derivative function there. Um, now again, say I wanted to just confirm that that was negative 14 at that initial condition, so my initial acceleration, second, trace, bring up calc, I'm going to find my value at x equals to 0. Okay, now it's going to initially tell me um, my y1, but I want to have a look at my y2. There we go, so there's my derivative and I can see there my initial acceleration at time is 0, my acceleration is negative 14. Okay, so the second part of my question asked to solve for um, my time when my acceleration is equal to 1. So now I'm solving an equation for my variable. 
Um, best way to do that, and what I really like to use, is the numeric solver on the calculator. So I'm going to head into my math button. Again, we've looked at this in previous videos. Um, and I'm going to go up. Remember, the numeric solver is right at the bottom. So if I use my up key, that takes me straight to the very last thing in the menu. Um, and I'm going to press enter on there. Um, now, again, I'm solving for where my acceleration, which is my derivative of my velocity, where that's equal to 1. So in my equation 1, I can enter again that same, using that same derivative template, the derivative of my velocity. So remembering my velocity is in y1, so my derivative of y1. Now, again, I'm not sure what x is at this point, so I'm not going to define x as a specific value. I'm just going to leave it set as x. My equation 2 that's what I'm solving for. So I'm solving for where x is equal to 1. So that's just going to be 1 there. Okay, so I'm um, pressing my graph button. Um, and then I can see there derivative equal to 1. That equation looks good to me. And I'm solving for x. And I can see there um, 2.5 is my correct solution for x. Um, now, if I wanted to, do, I could just double check this again using that same um, graph and the derivative graph that I sketched earlier. So I'll just let that come up there. Okay. So again, now if I use that same value function, so second calc, bring out my value. Um, I'm solving for, um, I think my acceleration at 2.5 should be 1. So if I type in 2.5, um, I can see there my velocity at 2.5 is equal to negative 6.25. Um, if I just use the up or down keys, that'll take me through to my acceleration graph. And there we go, 2.5, my acceleration is equal to 1. So that's perfect there. Okay, well, that's it from me for today. So um, have a great day and I'll see you next time.